welcome to my channel, Anglican Aesthetics. I, I don't really like making videos like these. Um, I try to, even with some of my thumbnails, right? So I've gotten some pushback from my thumbnails. I get that, um, you know, and they try to game the algorithm. The thumbnail you see in this video just expresses exactly um, the sentiment here. That I've really come to think Joe Heschmeyer is a bad faith uh, apologist. And in this video, I'm going to show why. So first, I want to deal with his response to my friend Javier, uh, his recent attempt to deal with Javier's argument. And I'm going to show how he obfuscates. And then I'm going to argue that this is deliberate. This isn't just Joe uh, sort of misunderstanding. This isn't just him trying to weasel, or it is him trying to weasel around. Uh, or, sorry, rather either it's him misunderstanding in which case it shows a kind of intellectual incompetence and he really shouldn't be in this business of ecumenical dialogue or uh it is a um it, it or he's actually just obfuscating it's if he's ignorant it's either a culpable ignorance because he ought to know better or if it's a non-culpable ignorance then he really shouldn't be doing apologetics in this space. And if it's not ignorance, and if he knows what he's doing, that he's bad faith. Either which way, and I actually, I really do think, it's probably that he has a kind of culpable, willful ignorance uh, to what he's doing here. But I'm going to demonstrate that later once I address his argument. Now, his response to Javier centers on a three-premise argument, uh, premise one, if sola scriptura is true, so he claims, then Protestants, uh, the Protestants that hold to sola scriptura, would come to agree on the essentials. We don't agree on the essentials, ergo sola scriptura is false. So it's a modus tollens, if P then Q, not Q, therefore not P. And his argument um, for the first premise in the video that he just released in response to Javier uh, is, well, to use a, a kind of analogy of a map. If multiple people uh, looked at a map and came to different conclusions about what that map was saying, well, then you'd have to conclude that the map wasn't clear to the conclusion that one was trying to draw from the map. In other words, if a, cart a cartograph cartographer stated that the map was clear in its instructions as to how to uh, get to or navigate a certain terrain, but multiple people look at the map, uh, and they're, then they can't come to an agreement uh, about what the map says, well, then the map must not be clear uh, to the particular end of discerning the path. The analog rests on this argument that if uh, X is claimed to do Y, but multiple people, let's say X is some methodology, some epistemic way of knowing, and X multiple people using x disagree about y well then x is unclear yielding unclear with respect to the claim or with respect to the conclusion of y it is unclear and insufficient to yield or to clearly show y if people disagree about y using x so again think back to this map analogy that joe uses if one claims that the map is clear to navigate a certain terrain and multiple people using the map come to a different conclusions about what the terrain is like well then therefore the map is unclear with respect to the terrain here's why it's a bad argument and again i'm going to show either joe, joan should know that it's a bad argument and if he doesn't know this it's culpable that he doesn't know this Suppose an atheist, this is, this is an argument Joe himself rejects. Suppose an atheist says, in response to a theist, that the evidence is actually clear for those who are well-intentioned, for those who are well-intentionally looking after the truth. And an atheist like Joe Schmidt, uh, who I do believe is well-intentioned um, and well-intentionally seeking after the truth, uh, says, well, it doesn't, it doesn't seem to, to me to compel the existence of God. Would Joe Heschmeyer then say, 
Well, I guess the evidence from the world is unclear. I guess the body of evidence contained in the world does not clearly point to the existence of a creator. Of course not, because the Catholic faith, the Roman Catholic magisterium in the 19th century, has dogmatically said it's possible to come to the existence of God. In fact, it's the most reasonable thing to come to the existence of God using reason. So Joe Heschmeyer cannot concede that argument, which means he is using an argument against Protestants that his own tradition does not allow him to use. Let's expand this sort of analogy. In case the point wasn't clear to Joe of Javier's video, and it clearly wasn't, even though Javier stated this several times, is that if you think the methodology, well, if X if, if, you, if you analyze a claim that, that says, well, X is clear unto the conclusion Y, and if you believe the premise, if X is clear unto the conclusion Y, then most of those using X or those well-intentionally using X should come to conclusion Y. But if most of those using X do not come to or come to different other conclusions than just Y, uh, then X is not really clear as to yielding or leading you to the conclusion Y. If you believe that argument, it's going to undermine your own, what we'll call ecclesialist, as Javier uh, argues, tradition. Now, what does Javier mean by ecclesialist? And again, Joe just sort of says, well, this is a made-up category, and he brushes this off, and he doesn't tell the viewers the argument that Javier clearly stated. The ecclesialist claim, we can sum up like this. It's actually exactly the argument that Joe makes. Ecclesialist traditions are those that think, well, because scripture doesn't yield a consistent, or allegedly those using scripture don't come to uh, a consistent, those using scripture itself, scripture alone, don't come to a consistent set of essentials, that you actually need something else alongside scripture. That way of thinking is all Javier meant by ecclesialist traditions, those who subscribe to that way of thinking, that covers Eastern Orthodoxy, that covers Roman Catholicism, that it's not that Eastern Orthodoxy thinks, of course not, that there's no such thing as uh, a kind of magisterium, if of course, of course they do believe in a kind of magisterium, so to find this tradition, authoritative tradition alongside scripture. In other words, they think sola scriptura is false. They think you need the tradition of the church mediated infallibly by the church through the Holy Spirit uh, in order to come to a list of essentials. That's all he's, he's saying. He's saying if you believe that, these churches fall under this group, um, that we need some sort of infallible um, tradition uh, to supplement scripture in order to come to a consistent list of essentials. Now, again, it should have been clear that what Javier's argument was, was an attack on the first premise. In other words, he did address the argument, even though Joe is claiming he didn't. The argument is that the first premise is false. For instance, uh, Roman Catholics disagree on whether a Protestant, uh, whether Vatican II allows a Protestant who self-consciously, like myself, rejects the claims of Rome uh, and can be saved. Different Roman Catholics will have different answers to how to interpret and apply Vatican II. Different traditions which say that, well, uh, if there's this methodology, namely uh, the use of authoritative infallible tradition, uh, that, that you need to appeal to it, because if you just appeal to scripture, uh, well, then you won't have an, an, an essential list of doctrines. Javier is showing that if you believe that, okay, so let's think about the traditions that say you need an infallible list of, uh, you need an infallible tradition, an infallible teaching authority alongside scripture. They don't come to the same conclusions. And so does that mean that relying on it, that it does the very fact that different churches that claim you need an infallible tradition going back to the apostles to supplement scripture disagree with each other show that therefore the claim that you need an infallible tradition 
to derive a list of essentials is false. Of course not, because Joe is a Roman Catholic. Because he believes one of those traditions, one of those ecclesial communities, Rome, has the right tradition, the right interpretation, uh, the right preservation of the tradition that's been handed down by the apostles. So the whole point of Javier's video is to say, look, the same argument could be, of course we don't raise it because it's a stupid argument, but the same argument could be raised against ecclesial traditions if we're really going to go down that road. And Joe can see in an instant why the argument doesn't work. Right? We can say, well, those churches that say you need an infallible tradition in order to derive a, a consistent list of essentials do not agree with each other about that infallible tradition. And they don't agree with each other about the list of essentials. And therefore, you don't, you can't need an infallible tradition alongside scripture. We would know that's a spurious form of reasoning. And so Joe is, or Javier's pointing out, for the exact same reason that's spurious when you do that to these ecclesial traditions, again, defined as those that claim you need an infallible teaching authority, an infallible tradition mediated through the church to supplement the authority of scripture in order to come to a consistent list of essentials. Those that claim that because they disagree with each other, we know that's a bad argument uh, against those ecclesialist traditions. We Protestants don't use that argument. We use other arguments like, uh, so the primacy of scripture is really a derivation of uh, committing ourselves to the apostolic teaching. I've covered that elsewhere on this channel. Let me give a couple more examples to make this point clear. Because again, Joe will, I'm convinced, try to obfuscate. Um, now, suppose you have a young earth creationist and an old earth creationist in the room together. And they disagree on whether the body of evidence, the sort of evidences writ into geog geography, geology, um, writ into biology. They disagree with each other over whether it yields the conclusion clearly that the earth is old. Does the sheer fact of their disagreement mean that the body of evidence is not clear unto a particular conclusion? Obviously not. Okay, what about flat earthers, right? There are some very intelligent flat earthers. Does the fact that you have disagreement about the shape of the earth show that the, the method by which we discern the shape of the earth, the evidences uh, adduced for the shape of the earth, do not yield one conclusion or another? Of course not. And Joe knows this. Okay. Okay. Within Rome herself... Does the fact that Vatican II can lend itself either towards thinking an atheist who self-consciously rejects Christian faith and self-consciously rejects belief in God um, can be saved or not? Does that mean the magisterium is unclear? I'm curious what Joe would say. Does he think the magisterium, does he think someone can be a self-conscious atheist and deny the teachings of the church claim it's false and still be saved. Different Roman Catholic theologians take different answers to that question who are in good standing with the church and all believe they're being obedient to magisterial teaching. Now, if Joe says, well, those theologians are wrong because magisterial teaching clearly says this and this and this. Guess what? That's exactly what we do with scripture. <laughs> it's the exact same thing that we do with scripture. To say, okay, yeah, those people can say whatever they want. Let's look at the text together and see what the text actually says. So what Javier is pointing out is that Joe is using an argument. The form of the argument to support premise one in his argument being, if X is said to clearly yield some conclusion Y to well-intentioned people who use or judge X, then those well-intentioned people using or judging X will all come to conclusion Y. But 
if it they don't, then X is unclear with respect to yielding conclusion Y. That's the pr principle he's leaning on. And it's a principle he does not accept when thinking about theism, right? When thinking about whether creation evinces God's existence. When thinking about whether historical evidence evinces the resurrection of Jesus. Whether historical evidence evinces the existence of Jesus, right? It's a principle he fundamentally disagrees with. That's what Javier's video was arguing. And again, if Joe was listening in good faith rather than just listening to produce a response, listening in order to disagree, he would have known that. Okay, and that leads me to the second part of this video. Joe is acting, I'm convinced, I didn't always think this, especially before this past month, I didn't really think this. I thought he was good faith. I'm no longer convinced he is. And here's why. Joe's a smart guy. He knows what he's doing. And that tells me then that the either the ignorance he has, if it is ignorance, either he knows what he's doing and he's just being deceptive. I don't think that's true. Or there is a culpable ignorance, a willful ignorance. So again, at the beginning of this video, I said there's a kind of willfulness going on here. I want to index that to a kind of willful self-deception. Because, okay, so if I'm ruling out he knows what the argument is, he's just obfuscating d intentionally because he's lying. I don't think that's true. Leaves me, us with the conclusion that either he is incompetently ignorant, he's non-culpably ignorant because he doesn't have the mental faculties to grasp the argument. I don't think that's true. Uh, or he's not doing his due diligence. He's not using the mental faculties he has adequately because there's a kind of willfulness in obfuscation. There's this drive to listen to the video, find something you disagree with, not in good faith, actually think through the argument of a video and then release a rebuttal. I think that's the only possible conclusion. Again, I'm adducing that conclusion because Joe might say, oh, well, he's accusing me, you know, uh, for no good reason. He doesn't give an argument. I did. I do give an argument. Either, Joe, you have uh, understood what Javier was trying to do, you understand what I'm trying to do, what other Protestants have tried to do, and you're still lying about the nature of our responses. Don't think that's true for your sake. For, this, for the sake of your soul, I hope that's not true. Or, uh, if you're ignorant, there are two species of ignorance. Shouldn't be a hard concept for you. Uh, there's culpable ignorance because it's beyond your capacity for whatever reason to understand the argument, in which case you just shouldn't be doing this sort of work. Or it's a culpable ignorance because you did have the capacities to know. And because, as I know, as several friends, <laughs> young Anglican, you know, Javier Berdomo, the other Paul, Gavin, all of us have reached out in several times, in several different ways. Whether it's through your comment section, whether it's through what you've interacted with before, uh, whether it's through uh, Messenger, whatever it is. All of us have reached out in several different ways, have explained the argument, and you still obfuscate. So again, a culpable ignorance, I think, is the most reasonable um, explanation for what's going on here. If you really want to know how do Protestants derive, what show us Protestants, how, like where, how do you derive your list of essentials? Is it all that clear? Guess what? Some of us have tried to do that. Uh, in that video, in the last video I made about this, Protestantism gets wrecked, right? Uh, I, I actually, I asked for Joe's opinion. The reason he dismissed it was because of my thumbnail. He said, well, your thumbnail's a straw man, uh, which is an interesting, yeah. <laughs> it's like, huh, yeah, thumbnails are, yeah, it's interesting. It's, uh, it's uh, interesting to sort of dismiss the whole argument without watching it just because of a thumbnail, you see, uh, without trying to get any further clarity. Um, and after clarifying what I meant, by the way, uh, with the thumbnail, Joe still actually uh, persisted in claiming Protestants hadn't done the work uh, in responding to him of showing how you derive the essentials from Scripture. To show that we can't, to show that scripture is unclear, you actually have to show that the kind of exegesis I use, which is the which is very standard, right? I didn't come up with this. Uh, this is the sort of exegesis that was used in the Reformation. It's the sort of exegesis that's used today to derive the essentials. You have to show that that somehow isn't clear, 
that that somehow those arguments somehow aren't strong. You're welcome to try. I welcome that discussion. But the difference is then we're actually going to talk about the text. Uh, we're actually going to dialogue about what scripture says uh, rather than try to use some of these a priori arguments uh, to say that scripture is unclear just because people disagree over what scripture says. It's bad epistemology. And again, he should know that. He, he, it's frustrating. I almost want to say he does know that. Uh, I, maybe he doesn't, which is just shocking, honestly, uh, and just disappointing. I'm going to end this video with a plea to Catholics. I think a lot of us, you know, have, have said, uh, and rightfully so, that there are certain Protestant apologists out there that I don't refer people to, right? So I don't refer people personally to James White. Because um, I think there are straw men he makes. I don't refer to Protestants uh, that are going to make straw men of Catholicism. Like Mason, what's his face on Twitter? Uh, I don't remember his last name. But he's this guy who just posts inflammatory stuff about Rome. Uh, and he misrepresents Rome. I'm not going to, Leo, I'm not going to point Protestants there uh, to say, okay, yeah, this is this guy. He has some good arguments. Rather, I'm going to say, no, this is, this is bad. Uh, this is not the level of, of dialogue we should engage with Catholic brothers and sisters. Furthermore, in condemning Joe Heschmeyer, uh, I'm not, uh, as someone who I don't think is actually very much worth um, uh, engaging, I, and the only reason I'm doing so is because he's actually just really popular, sadly, um, in these circles. Um, otherwise, I just wouldn't. He doesn't merit it. Um the ones that do merit, I do think there are plenty that merit it. Uh, Eric Yabara and I have some pretty heated disagreements on things, um, but I I think he's in good, very much in good faith, uh, you know. I, and I think he's he's very intelligent and he's pushing back, and I think he does his due diligence, and uh, I very much respect him. Uh, Braden from uh, uh, the Catechumen, I think, does good work, uh, even if I staunchly disagree with him on things. Trent Horn does good work. Uh, even again, if I staunchly disagree with him on things. Joe Heschmeyer, I think, ought to be utterly disregarded at this point as a serious voice because he's caught in obfuscating, and when he's called on obfuscating, he just obfuscates more. That is not how to do dialogue. That's not how to elevate the level of ecumenical progress because we're not going to make progress in trying to work through the rifts in the church if we're just content with obfuscating the, what the other side is saying and not honestly engaging what the other side is saying and then pretending that they haven't responded to your argument when they have. <laughs> uh, it's just not helpful. I hope this helps you. It's still, again, a little bit more heated than uh, I'm used to just because I'm really... His videos more than I think any other Catholic apologist. Other, Taylor Marshall I just don't really take seriously. Uh, but uh, Joe Heschmeyer, I think because of the kind of poll he has in the circles that people like Trent Horn or the Catechumen or, you know, Matt Fratt or whatever run in, because he has pull in those circles, uh, I take him seriously, not on his own merit for the reasons I just listed, uh, namely that he can't even recognize, uh, and again, I think as a culpable kind of form of ignorance, uh, when his argument is being uh, responded to, uh, when he's using a kind of argument that he would not grant in other domains of knowledge, uh, when, it, for example, again, the resurrection of Jesus, uh, if he really wants to say the evidence is unclear about the resurrection of Jesus, because people, historians studying the issue disagree about it, or the evidence is unclear about the existence of God because people disagree about it, then, okay, if you want to go that route, but I doubt that you'll have faith for very long, and we can talk about that. I'm happy to have that love, that conversation I do with atheists and agnostics. Um, but then don't pretend that you're doing this as a good faith Christian. Hope this is helpful. God bless.